Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2019. Brought to you by Informatica. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE's live coverage here in Las Vegas for Informatica World 2019. I'm John Furrier, your host with Rebecca Knight, who's on the floor getting some data, getting some reports. She's my co-host here this week. Next guest is Bruce Chisholm, board member of Informatica, OG, original gangster of the tech scene. Been there, done that. Welcome back to the Cube. Great to see you. Yeah, great to see you, John. Cube alumni. Um, yeah, I love having you on because we, you're kind of, you know, historian through experience, still active uh, in, the, in the industry, obviously Informatica. Four years private. Historian, that's scary. <laughs> well, yeah. You've been around the block. <laughs> you've seen more waves than I have, and that's, that's a lot. Um, but you, you know, you've, been, you've done a lot of things, and you've seen the waves. You've run companies, you've been on boards. Um, you've been on Informatica board. Four years private, a lot of great things can go on. Michael Dell proved that he took Dell, Dell Computer, which is now Dell Technologies, he took it private, and I asked him. He wanted to retool and didn't want to do the, you know, the shot clock of being a public company, the filing and Sarbanes, all those regulations because he knew it was coming, the wave was coming. Informatica did the same thing, so I'm expecting an IPO or M&A, big deal happening, but four years with great product people, you're on the board, data, our original conversation four years ago in theCUBE, hasn't changed. No. It's the same wave, and now everyone's jumping on the wave. The, the, the good thing for Informatica is, as a private company, we got to do things that we could not have done as a public company. The level of investment we made in R&D, the transition from perpetual or on-premise to subscription, the investment in the sales organization. Couldn't have done that as a public company because the shareholders tend to be too short-term focused. And also, um, I will add, just to get your reaction to, is that you know, my observation looking at these situations when you have smart people, the board like yourself, and the product team, which I've been complimentary of Informatica, as you know, uh, some other critical analysis, but that's different, but great product engineering people. When you don't have the pressure of time, you could watch things gestate, and when you're early, you have an advantage. Talk about that because that's a strategic you know, thing that not people aren't talk, much people are talking about, but you've had early lead on data, you've had product engineering leadership, and you had time. Yeah, it's not, as, it's not as easy as you make it sound. <laughs> Keep in mind that Informatica is owned by financial sponsors, <laughs> private equity, yeah, there's some pressure. CPP, and it's up to people like myself on the board, the other independent board member, the management team, to continue to remind the investors that if we make early investments yeah. and they pay off, the company will be worth more and they'll ultimately make more money and their limited yeah. that the partners will make more money. I made it sound like, you, I made it sound like you're on the beach a drinking wine. <laughs> a great know. example is what, what Informatica did with the uh, data catalog. The, the, that was an early investment. No one really knew whether it would pan out. Sounded good, but it required a significant investment that came out of the pockets of our investors and we were able to convince them to do that. Another great example is Claire. You know, AI is hot. Well, had we not invested in Claire three, three and a half years ago, Claire would not be in existence today. Couldn't have done that as a public company. And it gives you a little bit of a lead. Again, there's no shot clock on public, but yeah, the private equity, they're not going to let you sit around and you know, hit the beach and clip coupons. You've got to work hard. But I got to ask- The other thing you, you, you've seen, we've got, we've, the company has gone from a great point product company, great products, to really developing a platform and architecting a platform, which requires a significant amount of engineering. I was going to ask you about that. I'm glad you jumped the gun on that. Platform is the key. Um, speaking of platforms, I was just at Adobe, a company you're very familiar with. They're rolling out a new platform. Platforms are now back in vogue, but it's not the old way. The old day was build a platform, have a competitive advantage, lock in your, your nested solution, in immutability. Now it's platform open. Different twist. How is that different? Because you've seen the platform where you got to own it, barriers to entry, proprietary technology, to platform that's open, extensible. Yeah, customers have gotten smart. <laughs> no customer wants to be held hostage to one individual platform. SAP being a great example, Microsoft Windows being another example. They want to make sure that if they choose one platform, 
they could easily migrate to another. It's one of the reasons why Informatica is in such a sweet spot, because we allow our customers to choose which cloud infrastructure providers they want to put their workloads on, yeah. and they could use multiple cloud infrastructure. Uh, I got to ask about the competition players. now, that's not competition, but you know, co-opetition, well, just marketplace in general, everyone's jumping on the same wave that you guys have been talking. You go to youtube.com slash siliconangle and look up Informatica videos I've done here with the team, you, on four years ago. Look at some things we were talking about. Not a lot of many people talking about data-driven, hardcore analytics, next-gen. These are the kind of topics that in AI, machine learning, now everyone's talking about it. What's different about Informatica as the noise level increases around some of these things? Certainly it's pretty obvious, AI is going to be hot, multi-generational, cloud multi-generational things going to happen, uh, operations, you know, AI and automation. Yeah. But what's different about Informatica? What should people know about Informatica that might be unique that you could uh, lend some insight into? So, so when I think about the competition or the co-opetition, I put the, those competitors in two buckets. There's a whole slew of smaller players they have some really good point products. Fortunately for Informatica, they don't have the scale to compete. And when I say scale to compete, not just on the go to market side, but they can't afford to invest $200 million a year in research and development, building a complete platform. So even though they're kind of ankle biters and occasionally I, have to slap, I feel like a company has to slap them around and, and there are annoyances, I don't think they're a big threat. The cloud infrastructure players, the platform guys, Google, AWS, Azure, will continue to provide data tools that are developed for their stack. They will do some things that will be good enough. The good news is Informatica does great as it relates to enterprise cloud management. So if an enterprise really cares about their data, and they really care about having choice in the future, and they want, don't want to be held hostage to any one platform, Informatica is the only game in town. You know, one of the best was doing the queue this our 10th year, and I remember talking to some NetApp people because they invested in cloud early too, they don't get the credit, is that this is another example of Informatica invested early on in cloud. I mean, I talked to Emit and Anil years ago, again, the cloud, they were well down that cloud path, so Johnny come lately, so kind of jump on the cloud, gives an advantage, so, um, and, props and plus, to Informatica. And, and plus, it's not cloud only. Yeah. Most of the large enterprises are hybrid. They will be hybrid for many years to come. In fact, if you look at workloads today, the majority of the workloads are still on premise. Scales come up a lot. I've, you know my commentary in theCUBE, everyone who watches me knows I like to rap about, and was the first to call Amazon um, the trillion dollar opportunity because of the scale. Scale is the new competitive advantage, I've said that. I've said open is the new lock-in, um, and, and this is, you know, value is the new lock-in, is what I said. So now you got scale. So the question is, how does a startup compete if scale is table stakes? Is it race for funding? I mean, Snowflake's got a $3 billion valuation. Are they worth $3 billion? We're going to analyze that in the cube later. But they raise almost a billion dollars in cash. Do you scale up with cash and go, you Great know, technology. It starts out with really great technology. So I look at an organization like Snowflake, great technology. I look at Databricks, great technology. So you know, I look at the great new startups, what makes them great is they have an innovative technological solution that's hard to replicate. Then they get the funding and they're able to scale. That's what it takes to be a startup. And that's almost the OG, original gangster venture capital model. That's correct. You know, agile, iterate your way to success, no craft, no scale, just speed. Is the world going back to the old it's Going formula? back to innovation, to technical innovation, um, especially given that you have so many scale players. You can no longer just come in there as a startup. Money alone is not going to enable you to be successful. All right, I want you to pay it forward for all the young people graduating. I just was at my daughter's Cal Berkeley graduation yesterday, um, so although she wasn't in this class, but they, Cal just graduated their inaugural first generation class of data science. Databricks was involved in that. They donate a lot of software. They're very Cal oriented. People are graduating high school, elementary school. This is a new field, not enough jobs. I mean, Berkeley, a leading institution, first class ever in data science. What skill gaps are out there that need to be filled that people could learn now 
to get ahead and get an advantage in the workplace? Yeah, my, my view, John, is starts in middle school with math. If we could help our kids who are in middle school to get through algebra, studies have shown they will move on to uh, uh, undergrad and then many of them will move to graduate work. We've got to start early. Yeah, there's some simple fixes, you know, help people become coders, help people do other things. But the reality is, if we're going to solve- You can't get the algebra done, you're not going to code. We have to solve yeah. the longer term problem. So when I think about jobs of the future, we've got to create people who are creative, but at the same time, understand the basics. Yeah, math, stats, great stuff. Final question, you're going to run a company again soon? <laughs> so, I get that question uh, quite often. First of all, I love doing what I do today, which is kind of a lot of little stuff. I do miss running a company, but as I've told a whole bunch of people, I have no desire to ever, to ever report to a board again. So unless I own 51% of that company, <laughs> I will not be running a company. Well, now you know the deal terms. Anyone's watching for investment from Bruce, partnering with him. Great stuff. What's missing? What's going around the corner? What are people missing in the news these days and the trends? What's coming that's exciting that nobody's talking about? I, I think what's, what's happened, and this, this happens each wave, there's been so much excitement about the movement from on-premise to cloud, about AI and machine learning. I don't think people really appreciate how early it is that you know, we're this much into it and we've got a long ways to go and the old workflows that are on-premise, the amount of advancement in artificial intelligence and machine learning has so far to go that people need to be patient and continue to invest aggressively in what's going to transpire 10 years from now, not six months from now. Bruce. And then you add things like 5G, uh, faster speed Wi-Fi, that also is going to have this huge impact. Great insight, Bruce, thanks for sharing that insight. Get the kids learning math in middle school, gateway to coding, gateway to graduate work. Next 10 ways, a lot of waves coming. Bruce, thanks for sharing the insight. Thanks, John. See you again. It's a pleasure. Cube coverage here. At Informatica World 2019, I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with more after this short break.